So hello everyone. Um, it's my great pleasure to be hosting the webinar today with Todd O'Neill from uh, Denim Partners. And there have been many, many webinars over the last few months, I think, um, for accountants. There's been so many that we've um, seen pop up all over the place. So we're really pleased and grateful that you decided to turn up today. So big welcome, thank you. And thank you for Todd for um, talking about this really important topic for accountants today. We also have Christy, Greg, join us as well. And we'll just, let's get started, Todd. I thought we might start with um, just, uh, a 30 second, your elevator pitch, please, for everyone on um, what you do, who you are, and as Denim Partners, what you're all about. All right, well, no matter how many times I say this, 30 seconds is difficult. And, and I've just <laughs> yeah, wasted I, five. I get that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, look, essentially, we started in finance broking. We began working with accountants a long time ago and other referral partners. And throughout that journey, realized that um, a lot of the people we worked with um had clients that had requirements not just to finance but other things like property and financial planning and other financial services and, and we wanted to provide something to those professional firms that allowed them to you know offer the services without increasing their own resourcing and staff and cost etc um and so that's really been a journey of coming up with this this package of services uh, specifically for accountants, but other professional firms uh, can take advantage of it, of course. Um, but today is about accountants and, and where we see that going and what we can do for them. Excellent. Okay. So um, the why, 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 you sort of explained a little bit why you're working with accountants, but, you know, you've got a very successful finance and property business and a few other things. It's what, what's really behind the scenes of it all? So the uh, the three directors of Zenium have, have all been in uh, financial services and property investment for over 20 years each, in my case, 30, because I'm the old guy. Um, so, uh, and throughout that time, we constantly see people make decisions um, where they haven't had the best information provided to them. Mm. So they will make decisions based on emotion. They'll make decisions uh, based on advice from a friend. Uh, who doesn't really know <laughs> what yes. they should be doing. Yes. Um, and uh, they should be asking for advice, if you like, or, or consultation and information from the financial uh, advisors around them. And th at the core of that, it's often their accountant. And, Absolutely. Uh, and even I've, yeah. with all the knowledge I've had over the last years of being involved in property and finance, um, I've done some dumb things as well without consulting my accountant first. So, um, yeah. You know, Buying it's, a property in a off a line of credit instead of maybe putting it into a trust or super right. remote sort of thing. So um, it's very expensive, I guess, when you do make those decisions without consulting people like your accountant and your finance. Yeah, department. that's right. And and for and for some people, uh, I think it's changing. But for some people, they think that they've had this view that, well, if I go and ask someone, it's going to cost me money, and then it ends up costing them more hundreds of thousands it. more <laughs> because they didn't go and ask for the advice and in and in uh there are plenty of cases as well where um those clients didn't know that their accountant or advisor could provide that service yes, or advice. absolutely because you think you just go to your accountant for your tax services and uh those sort of things and don't think that your accountant may be able to introduce you to other people yeah, so they're so they're off in a in a world of you know wondering, making decisions, not asking, and then finding out later on that had they consulted someone, they might have made a better decision. So so our our why is that we think we believe that every Australian has the right to have you know to be informed and educated to make to make better financial decisions. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so run us through what you're going to go through today with everyone. Sure. So um, today we're going to have a look at. Uh, some surveys of actual clients as to what they want from their accountant, what they're putting their hands up for, and are constantly saying, yes, I would like my accountant to provide this. Um, and then we're asking, we're having a look at, well, are accountants aware that these that their clients actually need these services? Then uh, are you providing them? And then uh, if you are providing them, do your clients even know that they're available? Uh, relying on your website to tell them what you do uh, is not the best strategy. Once they've selected you as an accountant, it's unlikely they're going back to your website uh, because they already know you. So why would yeah, they? Yeah. Um, so what are you what are you telling them? 
And then if you have an offering and you say, well, okay, I can offer these 10 things, what's missing from it? And then how can you add to it? And then an outline, as, as we've said on the agenda, okay, how do we implement this? And when we talk about advisory, and I might repeat myself later on, but um, there's been a lot of talk about advisory for years and years. I can remember 10 years ago going to a, a conference on, you know, how to become an advisor, you know, moving away from tax and compliance. And it seems like that the whole agenda around that is, well, let's set, sell you some software so that you can go and consult to clients and charge them 10 grand a quarter and, you know, give them business advice. And it doesn't have to be like that. Mm. Uh, for many clients, particularly small businesses, it can be as simple as, hey, look, can you help me get the best deal on some finance, some equipment, or, you know, should I buy my investment property in uh, my own name or in a family trust or, you know, some what, what we would consider fairly simple pieces of advice uh, as really valuable for those clients. Uh, yeah. And that, that might make the difference to their whole world, you know. And so it doesn't have to be, as I said, those monthly or quarterly board meetings helping to grow their business globally, you know. Yeah. It's just a... And I think a lot of accountants probably putting it in the too hard basket as well. I'm so busy already. I you know, don't have a lot of time or capacity yeah. to take on more. So we put it in the too hard basket and yes. we never get around to it. So today is a little bit about how to get around to it without having to take up a lot of additional time and um, resources for that as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So I always love introducing our guest, Todd. So the people that are with us today, my, this is the sort of um, information they gave us when they entered, uh, registered for the webinar. They answered a few questions for us. And um, as you can see, they're very interested in adding additional services. So the question was, what's missing from your current offering? So not only is this relevant for the clients, but obviously for our guests as well today. So um, the top three, there's obviously finance options, wills and estate planning and property advice. So I think, you know, that goes without saying that um, it's very much in alignment with their, their clients as well from the surveys that you've um, had a look at. So this is one of the first surveys that you brought to our attention. Tell us yeah. about this one. Yeah, so that, look, the, the the date on it might seem a bit old, but then again, we have been hibernating for a couple of years. And so, <laughs> so um, everyone's been tied up with what can you do for me for COVID and accountants have been extremely busy with that sort of stuff, you know, um, managing their clients through that journey. But actually, uh, the numbers don't necessarily change that much, or at least the services they're asking for. And for many people, you know, financial planning and advice services is, is, is key. They do want business advisory, but that comes in, in many forms. Like I said, it doesn't have to be quarterly board meetings. Um, but also in there is things like, you know, finance, uh, SMSF, you know, audit, et cetera. Um, the taxation services is an obvious one. What would, you, what, would I, what would I like from my accountant, right? But some of these others, perhaps accountants didn't know that that's what their clients wanted. Yeah. And, and it's a pretty big mark. In fact, there was a, a statement a couple of years ago that said that if um, if uh, accountants took care of something like 25% of their clients' financial needs, they would replace bookkeeping as a revenue stream. Now, I'm not suggesting you go and do, do that. I'm just <laughs> okay. saying that you can add to it without putting on extra staff. So, um, yeah. you know, what we've seen in both of these slides is that uh, our, our guests today, and, and we've seen this plenty of times, other accounting firms have said, look, I'm missing this. And guess what? It's exactly what your, your clients are asking for. Yeah. And also that you're helping the clients out, plus you can earn some additional revenue at the same time by charging extra facilitation fees and um, um, having other revenue streams with it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think this slide, it just goes to show that everyone trusts their accountant as well. And I've found this as well, talking with, um, the you know, in the finance industry I've been working with for the last 20 years, is that um, if your accountant tells you to do something, you'll do it. If they say, go to this person, you'll go to that person because they're so highly trusted. Yeah, well, you've heard me say this a lot, a, a lot, Dina, but we we have always believed that accountants are the last bastion of trust, mm. you know? They don't and trust it's banks. it's so easy. You get a referral from an accountant, you know, that you, or if you're referred by the accountant, it's just something you have to do. You sort of don't, you don't question it at all, do you? Well, there's an independence. There's mm. an independence. And that's the, that's the perception is that, you know, I'll check with my accountant because I don't believe you. 
you know, <laughs> the yeah. advice is coming from a banker or a financial planner or even as, oh, as I might a say, real a finance broker, real, real estate agent. agent. Yep. yep. Uh, let me just check that with my accountant. And so, and I, and that's great. It's, it's high trust value. And the accountants we work with are very um, uh, cognizant of holding on to that, that hmm. trust. Uh, you know, and uh, when we work with them, we don't want to do anything that betrays that trust with the clients. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess if accountants do offer these services, and this is what you were mentioning before, you go to the website, you never go back to it. So you don't actually ever find out about what other services accountants offer. So um, what's your experience with this when you have um, worked with them? Well, exactly that. Clients didn't know that that's something that they could approach their accountant for. Um, and but but that's not the client's fault. You have to take the position that if if they don't know, it's because you haven't told them. Hmm. If you are offering it, why aren't you telling them? And now, not just being told once. You've got to remind them on a regular basis. Um, yeah, and that's well. something that something we'll talk about in in a little while. But consistency of communication, mm -hmm. in my experience, is more important than clickbait headlines. Yeah, you know, constantly reminding people that we can look after in different ways, obviously, but constantly reminding your clients that we can look after the, these services for you. You know, at some stage in their what we call their whole of financial life, they will remember. Oh yes, my accountant can look after me for finance for my vehicle, or I should talk to them about property investment advice. Remember that article they sent to us, or that checklist, or that download, etc., or that email. Mm -hmm. um, They'll forget, I can tell you now, they'll forget about fringe benefits tax and they'll forget about, you know, all the, the tax changes, et cetera, and the, you know, the payroll changes. That will fly over their heads. Because well, they, I probably also expect their bookkeeper to know all that stuff. I think. Well, uh, well, I guess I guess they expect someone to be mm. looking after that, right or wrongly. But they, each person, you know, we can't see these, we can't see clients as, you know, these individual entities that, only move along the path that we want them to move along. They don't. They have their own life. Their personal life impacts on everything, their business, what they do, when they're buying a property, whatever it might be. And we call it the whole of financial life. Are you looking after all of that for them? For some clients, that might just be, I want to buy a house. I'd like to have an investment property. You know, I want I want my super in the best place. And can you please look after my tax? That maybe that's it. Hmm. Maybe that's it. But but why not look after all of it? So as we said, consistency and regular, regular, sorry, regular, regular education about things that matter is important. You know, helping them plan their financial life, uh, protecting their assets, obviously. And then, what's really important on this slide is the project manage, uh, project manage the relationship statement. Uh, you talked before about accountants being busy. Everybody's busy. I know. Um, how do I do this? I don't want to add more staff. Uh, how much time is it going to take? You need to become the project manager of these relationships. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you have to have financial planning sitting inside your office or broking or property investment or an estate planner that is in your office, but you need to have those relationships that you can refer to. Mm -hmm. And then and then project manage. So the client will always come back to you. So what's happening here? And, and you're the manager of those relationships. Yeah, so, and that would uh, make for a more meaningful um, relationship with the clients as well. So I've talked to you about the various accountants I've worked with in the past, and uh, sometimes it feels like they're they're not interested. They do your tax return. They know I'm paying a lot of you know interest on on my investment properties. Sometimes you think, well, you know, wouldn't I would have thought it's not too hard, is it? Say, so, Idina, well, we've got you know interest rates are going up. When was the last time you reviewed your um properties? You want me to you know take care of that and introduce someone that can look at that for you yes if if someone thinks about that and they, and they probably won't think about it unless a they're offering the service and b it's top of mind for the clients as well otherwise it will just be a taxation mm. discussion right absolutely okay um, well let's get stuck into it then so there's a lot of advantages for um accounting firms to do this so i think the biggest thing that uh, message you're trying to drive here is about the deeper engagement with clients it's not just about your tax returns Obviously, there's an opportunity for increased revenue. Now, tell us about the data-driven opportunities. So part of part of one of our packages is, is offering a, a customer relationship management system called Zeppo. You, some people may have heard of it. We have an agreement, a wholesale agreement with Zeppo to implement that into a firm. And, and what Zeppo does is it collects data from various sources, such as 
Uh, it integrates with Xero and Myob and a, a range of other services like BGL and Class, et cetera. And it gives you one central point for all of your data. So from an accountant's point of view, it's extremely powerful and, and having the data is okay, but you need to be able to use that data. So, okay, there's one central point where everything is correct. So it will, first of all, do some administrative stuff like, well, what if the address that they've got with BGL is not the address that we've got? And, the, you know, just updating that information and making sure that communication is right with the clients. But what we can also do, just as an example, is, you know, once you've implemented uh, the system and connected it, then we can have a look at those opportunities and say, well, okay, how many of our people, how many of our clients are, you know, 45 and over and don't have an estate plan? Hmm. Uh, how many? How many of our clients have self-managed super funds and are currently um, paying interest. Well, why do we care? Well, what if 20 of them are paying interest at the moment? It means they've got a loan. Mm. And then we can talk to them about, well, would you like us to have a look at refinancing your loan and getting you a cheaper rate, right? So that, so all of a sudden, you know, when you talk about accounting fees as an offset, this is the way I look at it. Well, if, an, if your account's charging you five grand and then, and then the accountant comes along and says, well, by the way, let me help you refinance your uh, commercial property loan in your super fund. And we're going to save you, you know, a couple of percent of interest. And, and then all of a sudden there's a well, 10 grand saving. Grand, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's not so much angst about paying but that bill. Your accounting there, right? fees are really negligible, aren't they? They offer Well, that's right. You know, and I'll, and I'll give you an example. We've got one right now from, from an accountant. Clients are paying 8.04% with their lender on their SMSF and we're bringing them across to a 5.3%. So, that's, you know, on their, that's saving them around, on their debt around $27,000 a year, right? So, um, and that was a simple conversation. So that that's the kind of revenue so driving opportunities. Hero then. Yeah, that's right. And it, and of course it drives deeper engagement because now you're looking after another part of their of their business, you know? Oh. I've, I've, seen, I've seen people go out and set up a self-managed super fund themselves and not engage their accountant to do it. And then all of a sudden, the accounting for the self-managed super fund is sitting over with someone else. Yes. And you know, then and that, what was the greater chance of then going across to that accountant because they're already doing the self-manage? Yeah. Well, it's sometimes cruel. it happens, right? They see someone, they go to a, a property spruiking event, they get told to buy it in their super fund, yes. financial planners there to do the deal and refers them to, you know, their accountant who will just do their self-managed super fund, don't worry about talking to yours, yes. you know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you, you don't have as, as deep an engagement with those clients and it can be quite frustrating. I know a few accountants in that situation, it's very frustrating. So this is about capturing all of their information and then, and then you know, taking advantage of that to drive that deeper engagement. Mm. And obviously, there's there's lots of benefits for the client as well. And I think, like you said, the regular communication, the education, and I think a lot of it is because the your clients aren't aware that you do it. And so that regular, consistent education of what services are and how they can help them with their business or their personal lives, um, that will just keep them top of mind and um, help them out there as well. Yeah, and this is not, and and it is we call it whole of financial life because it takes time, right? You're not doing all of this in a month. That's right. Yes. You know, you need to talk to them for three or four years. And over that time period, there are different transactions, you know, buy a house, buy a car, et cetera. So with the implementation used, you mentioned technology earlier, but it's not technology just by itself, is it? Because otherwise it'd be easy to do. So well, and and also everybody out there in this accountant universe is trying to sell software to accountants, right? I couldn't so, believe how much software there is out there. Um, yeah. it's like I get you know, 10 emails a week about different software and different sure. accountants. So I, I don't know how um, full your inbox is, but it keeps coming, doesn't it? Yeah, it it does. And and what we found in our experience, every, you know, everyone is a single, single use supplier or, you know, they're a single supplier trying to solve one problem and, and that's really cool. But then how does it integrate with everything else? You know, is it actually moving your practice forward and is it moving your relationships forward and your revenue forward? Or does it just solve one small problem and then you have to pull in everything else to do that? So I think the first part is really sitting down and deciding what you want to do as a business, if you haven't already, and, and many have. And what I mean by that is, you know, what type of practice are you or do you want to be? So, so some practices that we deal with, for example, you know, one in particular specifically deals with tradies. Mm -hmm. that's that's who they are yep. 
And so every part of their software offering, their pay payroll systems, et cetera, you know, everything, uh, asset protection strategies, it's all set up for that market. Now, you may not be able to do that. Perhaps your market is not as big, but you might decide that, okay, well, I'm going to service these three areas. Or you say, no, 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 I'll look after everybody. Well, that's okay, as long as you've decided on what you're going to do. And then, you know, have you talked about what capacity you have and then your, your resource planning? So, you know, you might talk to someone like, David Smith that we've spoken to from Smith Inc can sit down and do a, a resource planning ses uh, session to say, well, if we're going to be this practice and implement these things, then who are the people that we need? You know, mm. do we just, I know there's, there's staff shortages everywhere at the moment. Am I just going yes. to take any senior accountant I can find to just get into my office? Or do I want someone who's actually had experience in that, in that area, right? Yeah. And then after you've determined that pathway, then you can have a look at the software and say, well, does the software actually help move us along this pathway or is it just a software provider trying to sell me something because they because they want to sell me something you know and and all of them have great benefits we've partnered with with a few like ignition and lightyear docs etc and uh, we'll always recommend and introduce people to them but we're not saying oh you must take this mm. you know we've just reviewed them and said these are these are these work really well you know uh, and then what's your communication engagement system so who are you who are the people and, and resources you need how can you make your business more efficient and then how can you tell your clients and get new clients mm. uh you know starting at number four is you have to start at number one right that's why it's, that's why it's a list <laughs> <laughs> one two three four who are you first before you start telling people right and these, these are part of the um outcomes of doing one to four i guess yeah, so, so we talked about the CRM before. I mean, that brings in all your data because now why is the data important? Well, because now you've decided who you are and what direction you're taking, what services you're offering. Now you can start to use that data properly and, and find those opportunities. Hmm. Um, and when one you talk to a marketing putting... person like me, I just love data because data drives the communication that drives the engagement that drives the ultimate outcome as well. So data so so good when it does come to communication and engagement. When it's the right, and it's when it's used correctly. Right? Mm, so right. we, so a lot of people think they have a CRM, for example, mm. but they're using zero or what have you. What they've really got is, you know, some names and email addresses. So, yeah. I mean, I know that's very simple, but, but, you know, it's not telling you really the opportunities that are available. Yeah, and it's all about the quality of communication as well. I get probably two emails a year from my accountant. One is when something changes that I think, well, shouldn't you know about that? Do I need to know about it? And the other one is the um, when they send me that um, audit, what is it? Yeah, audit insurance, um, which, yes. you know, I never take half, but um, I'm assuming they get a clip of it. But uh, they're, they're the two emails. There's no reason why I need audit insurance or, um, or any communication around it, but it comes out the same time every year, I've noticed. So, um, well, I guess that's, that's, about, that's about implementing that plan. Mm. Who, who do you want to talk to? Why are you talking to them? And what about, right? So, yeah. And so you've got an SMS um, a digital online creation. and um, Well, we put that in there because we're talking about technology. And one of the things that I find with a lot of uh, accounting practices in our space is that often a client will come to them and want self-managed super funds. Um, if, if the accountant doesn't have a license to provide that advice, and many, many don't, then, then they're all of a sudden referring out to a financial planner, which... Uh, either if, if they have a relationship, that's great, but some don't. And others will say to the client, you need to go see a financial planner. They need this advice. Even though it's self-managed, uh, they have to get advice to set it up and it needs to be signed off. So, so we actually offer that, that service uh, just for SMSF in that, in that instance where the client and the accountant can fill out a fact find. That will go to our uh, financial planner and, um, and they'll create the statement of advice after interviewing the client and running through the fact find with them, looking at their needs and objectives and put together the statement of advice and then deliver that back to the accountant and the client. So the accountant um, doesn't need any qualifications to do this or any training? No, it's because, because it is effectively a referral to a, to a financial planner and signed off by their dealer group, but it's just an easier way of establishing a relationship in that particular space without it, without it having to encompass everything 
you know, they don't have to be the person that looks after all of their financial planning. Some people don't want a financial planner per se, but they definitely want their own self managed super fund because they're going to buy an investment property or a commercial, you know, their premises, right? Yeah. Um, the risk of putting it outside a network, if you like, is that, again, you know, perhaps you'll lose the accounting work or perhaps the, in my experience, uh, the accountants that I'm dealing with, you know, their main complaint is, they send them off to this financial planner that they don't necessarily know or the client finds them and then they come back with something completely different that says when really what they wanted to do was, was to buy a property in their SMS. Oh, I've seen that too. So some of the staff, because we try to educate the staff here because um, that's what we do with financial educators. But um, but some of my staff have gone off. They have been to a property thing and then they've gone and pretty much used all their super to buy investment property and, um, and with their financial planner's help. So it um, is concerning. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess the main thing for us is that um, we're providing a service to the accountants for their clients. They don't have to use it, but it's part of the package. It's, it's always yeah. there. Fantastic. Okay. So tell us about your finance offering because it's quite unique what you have available to um, these professionals as well, isn't it? Because it's, it's not just broking. It's a, you've got a direct-to-bank lending opportunity as well. So how does that work? Yeah, so Zenium Finance is our is our finance uh, company. Zenium Partners is is you know our consulting firm to accounting practices. And in the finance world, there are two distinct areas. One is broking, and the other is what's called direct to bank. And um, direct to bank is simply this: uh, your client likes NAB, but they don't know anyone there, or or you know they'd like to go to Westpac, but they don't have a contact, etc. Uh, our program lets accountants introduce them direct to the bank that they want to go to, uh, and the accountant gets paid a commission for that, an upfront commission. Um, there isn't another company in the space that can do both of those things. You're not allowed to actually be a broker and direct to bank, and, and we're not. Zenium Finance is a broking company. We have a partnership with another group called Nexus, which offers the direct to bank option. Now, what some accountants say to me, why would I do that, Todd? Why wouldn't I just go with broking? And I, and I get that because I'm a broker. <laughs> so, but but sometimes clients just say, well, look, we've been with Westpac for 20 years. We actually quite like them. And, you know, can you, I, don't know, you can, I just don't know anyone there, right? Can you introduce oh. me? And so we provide that service to accountants to allow them to do it. Uh, and then the other side of that, of course, is broking. We, we offer residential, commercial and business uh, finance and asset finance. Uh, many brokers only do houses or cars or business, for example. Yeah, uh, and Zenium Finance. The range. Yeah. yeah, Zenium Finance as a company um, currently looks after uh, Mortgage Choice and Smartline across the country. So there's there's 900 residential brokers that that refer their business lending to us uh, because they they look after home loans, for example. So we have the capability to look after every every option. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. And like I said, then it's a consumer choice. They can choose whether they go direct to bank. And um, the other thing is that not every bank is, is set up to do that commercial or asset side of finance either. So no, no, they not may not have the best asset finance package, for example. So that's when the um, the commercial side of things for the business owners uh, taps yeah. into having that. Yeah, package. absolutely. Yeah, it's it's important to talk to us first because we can decide we can help decide where it should go. You know. Okay, so we've got partnerships with insurance. Uh, quickly about that. Yeah, so we, we do have a partnership with insurance. It's risk insurance. I mean, one of the things that people forget about when they increase their lending is to review their insurance, hmm. and, and particularly for businesses. So um, although for many banks, they will require, to, you know, they'll require a, a review and, um, and they'll probably offer it themselves. But it's something that we offer uh, and allow uh, accountants to take advantage of that so that we can, you know, our partners will do a review of their risk insurance, make sure that they're properly covered uh, for all of the risks and particularly important when they're, when they're doing any borrowing because they seem to forget that hmm. there's a debt to be paid out and you don't necessarily want to be sitting there, uh, you know, having to sell an asset or your grieving family having to sell an asset. And I'm surprised how many people only have insurance in super, not outside of super. Um, I think that that's, yeah, I think that that seems to have um, permeated our society somehow. 
yeah as and being not aware and why you might have you know insurance outside of super as well yeah there's a whole there's a whole host of reasons outside of super right so particularly for businesses and um okay. you know particularly if you've got independent directors etc at risk with their own families you know um you just got to make sure that everyone's it's okay it's okay to have it inside super and to make sure everyone's covered but at least do the review Absolutely. And yeah, tick that box that you've done. We've had a chat about the SMSF online delivery. Sure. Um, and oh, your property services, though, I meant to put, oh, maybe that's coming. That might be coming up. Um, the communication <laughs> platform. <laughs> Would you like so, to um, it's, yeah, so we were about to talk about that. So, what we said before was that consistency of, of um, messaging is important. And so, what we offer in our packages is the ability to have content delivered to their existing database and i want to make this uh distinction is that that delivery is under the accountant's brand not ours mm -hmm. so it's it's educational and informational uh and it's engaging and it comes out under the accountant's brand so um and it's constant it's either two or three times a month on different subjects like finance or asset protection or estate planning or you know any of those subjects uh, that people are interested in and want to learn about. So um, we've we put in place originally, we started a long time ago, simply providing the content to accountants to deliver to their databases. And all that did, unfortunately, was increase their workload. And, um, and you know, sometimes it just never got done mm. because there's other things to do. Yeah, so we experienced that with the mortgage brokers we work with. So, so just full disclaimer here too, I don't think I actually introduced myself, but um, I run a marketing agency called Your Client Matters that delivers the marketing programs um, that Todd's talking about. Yes, and it took us a long time to find you, Dina. So I'm pleased we did. <laughs> so, um, but it's really important that it comes out under the brand of the accountant that they're happy with the content, and I think they should be. I've, I've mm -hmm. looked at so many over the last uh, however many years, and um, and it's engaging content. And as I said, it's delivered for you to your database. Mm. So, um, and that's really important because it doesn't increase the workload. Yeah. And I think the methodology that we use, I always sit in the shoes of your clients. So I might know about property and finance and various bits of accounting because I've been in the industry for so long, but not everyone does. So I always sit in the shoes and go, okay, what would I like to know as a business owner or as a a consumer that I, you know, would like to know? And that's what we write about. And that's why, I think our content is very different to what's out there. When we looked at working with accountants as well, what I found in terms of other marketing agencies out there, one, they were very, very expensive, but two, they tend to be all around the digital marketing and charging for SEO and Facebook ads and things like that and not mm. actually working with existing clients because there's an enormous opportunity just within your existing client base before you even need to look outside absolutely of facebook and, yeah. and, and and they're your best opportunity because they already like you they do <laughs> so. and i think you've all, you also went through a very expensive phase of trying out different marketing agencies as well to achieve oh, absolutely thousands yeah. and thousands of dollars yeah. yeah creating content that was you know written by someone uh sitting elsewhere in the globe that didn't have an australian based um perspective and it's mm. on the end and, that, and that's important. I see, I mean, you just have to click on some of the news reports and you can tell that it's written by someone who doesn't And it's as though grammars have gone out of the window. People don't write properly anymore and there's typos and <laughs> even journalists. And it's, yeah. it's, um, I'm a bit of a Nazi when it comes to um, quality writing and uh, even blogs and nothing's referenced. And uh, it's very interesting to see what other people do. It seems like we've dropped, dropped a major... Um, Oh, I don't know, quality criteria in, in our language. But um, so if it's okay, I might just go through this side of things. For yeah, sure. On. So I guess what I already started is, is making sure the, uh, the communication is relevant and engaging. So I sit in the shoes. I know what I don't want to hear from, from my accountant and um, or my broker or my um, property person. But I do know what I do and most of the population want to hear about. So we're, we're very focused on the content that we, we put together. It's also got to be engaging and relevant so that they do actually, if they read something that they like, then they're going to get in touch with you and reach out and ask for that help. And we put systems and strategies around that as well. So for the accounting communication system, it does go, it's not going to be about your typical tax stuff that you'd probably shoot out um, to your clients 
uh, as a normal part of your process. It's more around the education of all the other things like your estate planning, your property investment, your assets, um, asset protection and all those other things that people um, are wanting to. So it's sort of like a, a multi, uh, what do we call it? A smorgasbord, if you'd like, for one or other words, a smorgasbord of um, a quality communication about a range of different things across the different services that you might be wanting to offer. Yeah. Um, we also have an engagement qualification system. So we use surveys to drive engagement and we've been working with you on driving more engagement for your business as well, Todd. And some of the people here with us today have experienced that um, yeah. because they're here as a result of the communication that we've been sending out. They've had a look at the content, they've seen the content, they've downloaded PDFs and uh, possibly used that as well. And um, we do that through a use of surveys. So again, with the data that they can already collect through your CRM, uh, we can draw additional data, which is live data, every month through that email communication as well. So um, I guess, yeah, the whole idea is to communicate, inform and educate your, your customers about what it is and the services that you do offer, integrate it with um, the other opportunities that um, we're trying to uh, share with the clients that these are the things we do. And um, yeah, just delivering on your behalf, branded, sort of like a white label branded, delivered all, you know, um, all, all branded from your business so it looks like you've actually done it. There's also sections there that you can personalise messages and things like that so you can put your personal touch there as well. Um, you've used some, obviously you've been using our content, Todd. Maybe you should talk about the type of content um, rather than me. You've, you've had people call as a result of emails going out. And yeah, like absolutely. And... and um... <clears throat> Um, what's interesting is that obviously people don't give you immediate feedback on what they're reading unless they have a requirement. But we've certainly noticed uh, since working with you an increase in our own uh, client database of interest in particular products and clients coming back to us perhaps that we haven't actually spoken to for some time. And the reason, and then, you know, they'll say, they'll make offhand comments like, oh, you, you keep sending me those flyers and I thought I'd ask you about this. Or, you know, not just the other day, I got a screenshot texted to me uh, actually of this this article here about lenders do not like tax debt, right? So sent me the screenshot, said, we need to talk about this. So, okay, so you've got a tax debt. Let's, let's deal with that. It's relevant information and that's what's important. But mm -hmm. it's also um, important from an accountant's perspective to be able to provide the um, information to expand their own service offering like, you know, okay, the asset protection quiz, et cetera. That's a, people love quizzes and qualifying and surveys. And it's like, oh, am I allowed, you know, can I get this kind of thing? Or should I, should I, uh, do I qualify for it? It's a great way to introduce someone rather than just telling them about it, but having them actually interact. Uh, and then- And, and I find it interesting too. So, sorry to interrupt this. As, as we're writing this one as well, it's like, how much do we know ourselves as we're doing it? Because some things we think we know because we've been told by friends or family or other people, and then when you actually go to the quiz, you go, oh, I didn't know as much as I thought. Um, so even if you do think you know more than you do, it's a good opportunity to go, oh, hang on a minute, yes, and oh, I didn't know that. I probably should talk to my accountant on that. Yeah, absolutely. And look, there's a satisfaction with educating people around this. You know, they might not read everything, but at least they now know that this is what you do, you know. And if you've got a particular uh, style or a particular type of service that you want to promote, you can do that through the surveys by asking the right questions, for example. You know. yeah. So let's talk about the surveys for a moment, Dan. You could probably share your experience of the surveys. Yeah, so so uh, one of the things which I, I know that you and I have talked about is that, you know, people think, well, oh, they're not going to fill out a survey, but they actually do, right? We started these some time ago in a very basic form and, and yours is much more comprehensive. And what happens is, you know, people, they want to tell you what they want, you mm -hmm. know, and, and why not deliver the services that they want? You know, so so we're in filling out the surveys, all of a sudden you've got these, what I will call leads, but actually they're just people who are interested in finding out more about a particular subject. Now and you it can- makes the conversation a lot easier too, doesn't it? So it's not like you're calling clients to say, oh, you know, did you want to talk about self-managed super? They're actually going, hey, I want to talk about self-managed super. Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're calling them and say, hey, <laughs> you said this. Can we talk about it? Do you want to have a chat? It might just be a simple question or it might lead to 
let's set a self-managed super fund up or mm. let's, you know, let's put in place a tax strategy or an asset protection strategy. Yeah, and just so we, people know there too, we've been doing this for 16 years, um, this survey, and it is wrapped around a competition. So I'll share that with you now because it's, um, and it was interesting when we started talking with accountants, some accountants thought, oh, that's great. My clients would love to enter a competition. Other accountants sort of had that little voice in their head going, no, competition's gimmicky and don't think my clients will look and we put this judgment around it. So I'm just going to ask people that are with us today, please don't put a judgment around whether the competition works or not until I show you some results. So, and what we have done is uh, we're making the survey available with or without the competition as well. But I think the benefit of the competition and it's proved itself over the last 16 years is there's a reason to enter and complete the survey as opposed because I might win a trip to Cairns Yes, it's not just your opinion. It's not just your opinion. And, um, you, you know, you might just, uh, the competition's running all the time. And so what you might enter this year might be completely different next year. Whereas if you just see enter my survey, enter my survey, and we know the take-up of surveys is very, very low. The take-up of online surveys on hold on bank surveys, it takes, you know, less than 60 seconds to push a few buttons, but we still hang up. Yeah. So we've been doing this for 16 years with massive success. But like I said, we do we do have the option with or without. Uh, but I just want to share the results. For, this is probably our uh, pre premier um, accountant with us. So I don't. You might want to have a look at the similar things here. So we did three campaigns um, with this guy in August, and one was a welcome campaign, saying um, I'm just letting you know that I'm you know starting to you know offer this educational service now. Um, these are the additional service that we're offering and just a general nice in, um, introduction that he hadn't been communicating with his clients for ever. Um, mm -hmm. He did take over his father's business and there'd be no formal communication. Then we did one of our um, monthly email campaigns, as we call it. Um, I think it was about, I can't remember now, uh, probably about working from home and tax related, I think, because it was still early August. And then we did a competition blast. Um, letting people know that they could enter a competition. And if you look at the open rates, normal industry open rates are about 15%. Uh, from brokers and accountants, it should be about 20%. We typically average between 30 and 40% with ours, but um, on this size database for 1,100 people to get 50% plus open rate is pretty impressive um, yeah. by any means. And if you have a look at the engagement as well, normally, click through rates and this is where your digital marketers will not tell you but a good click what what would you have thought a good click through rate is Todd? About four percent? No it's about one. Digital marketers <laughs> okay. will tell you a good well click I, I would have thought rate. a good a good one was four percent but well, I'm that's not, an that's excellent a, one. No that's yeah, like really that's a, nearly yeah. unheard of one. But yeah. when again there's a lot of digital marketers out there uh, you know sprucing their their um Things here, but the, unless you've got something to people want to click through and click through and read a topic sheet or click through and I said enter a competition. Um, so the click through rates are pretty good as well. But I, what I want to show you is the results that he got 289 entries into the competition. Now they weren't individual people, but if you have a look here where um, you can see that was from the Brasso, um, 83% of the interest was just sharing that there's a competition to enter there was no educational piece either but that proved that clients were actually interested in in jumping in and doing this and what they did was fill out a survey with lots of information the other thing i wanted to point out with this particular one is an eight percent online referral so not only are click through rates less than one percent considered good this is someone's entered the competition and then they've referred their friends and family to enter the competition and fill out that survey and re-engage and engage with their their, their accountant. So it's mm. actually generated um, new business as well. There's some other things there as well um, that an event and some Facebook and website and things like that. So we track and measure uh, up to about a dozen or more ways of where people can enter the competition. Now, 92, there was 92 unique. Um, users out of the 300 there that left survey answers and 48% of people who entered the competition actually answered the survey. So again, the competition, some people are just in there because they want to win a competition, they won't fill in anything and that's okay. You're engaging them and um, offering them uh, opportunity to go on a holiday. And um, But 
nearly 50% of them actually filled out the survey, which is pretty cool. So some of the results that we found with this one was that if you have a look at it, are you interested in additional tax strategies? Well, of course we are. 58% of people want to know how to reduce their tax. So you can offer them a whole variety of ways of doing that. Property just happens to be one of them, uh, but that's always a good one. Um, 13, so 25 responses saying, I don't think that's for me. Like, I don't know who doesn't want to reduce their tax, but anyway, um, that, that might come with a little bit of education as well. Um, like more information. So you can see that um, out of those responses, the sort of opportunities here that you can start having those conversations with your clients. So um, what are your thoughts on expanding your property investment portfolio? I'd love to start one. There's 12 people there looking for property. There's 17 looking for, you know, expanding. There's 20 that think their capacity, but may be happy to look in it. But sometimes we think we can't take on. I remember... Um, I think it was going from one property to two properties seems to be okay, but that third, getting over that third one, because there's not many people, I think it's something like 3% of the population ever get beyond yeah, very few. Yeah. And I remember how easy it was when we got our third and fourth property. It seemed to be a bit easy because by that time, the first two were paying for themselves and, you know, and... And, and you knew what you were pay. doing. Yeah, and we didn't want to pay tax on the income because then they become positive geared. We need to buy more. So I don't think a lot of people realise how easy it is to step through that next hurdle. Um, even if you get responses here, like it says, it scares me. Well, again, that's about re-educating them about property. There's usually one or one of the two partners that want to and the other doesn't. So we talk about that. Um, so you can see the quality of um, qualification that this, these survey questions give. So it's not really about the competition at all. That's just the motivator to get them to actually take a look at entering the competition. The real design behind the competition is this data that we collect that helps you have a lot better conversations with your client. And again, can we help with any of these services, access to better homes, business goal setting, expanding wills and personal risk insurance and things like that. And what we can do is personalise the surveys according to the business that you're running. So if you don't offer um, uh, risk insurance, for example, or you're not going to use Todd's service, well, we don't have to put those questions in. So we can actually accommodate the survey and the questions according to the business. What I loved about this one was the um, 16 testimonies this company got. So that's the other thing we asked for feedback. So your clients um, generally give you feedback. I, I don't think I've ever in the 16 years seen any negative feedback. People tend to always give good feedback. And that's what you can use to put on your website and promote your service and, and use as marketing to say, you know, these people love me. So it's a lot easier to do it that way than actually pick up the phone and ask someone, oh, by the way, can you give me a testimony? Yes, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so that's all about the marketing component. So um, Todd, do you want to go through your different packages that you've got for accountants that do want to work with you? The marketing one component of it, we've worked together to um, um, allow your clients to tap into our marketing there as well. So do you want to see yeah. the options? Yeah, so we, we've done a, we, we've revamped this a few times just from feedback from, from our accounting partners in terms of what they want. And there's there's a few different levels if you like and the first one is it's a referral partner relationship only we pay commissions on that um, we provide an introduction to your company Dina at, at a discounted price for the marketing so we don't deliver that for them or it's not part of the um part of the <laughs> what are you concerned that you're giving a discount it's too late <laughs> so it doesn't discount <laughs> you've already you've already given it so we've well, yeah, already agreed on that <laughs> so we can uh we you know that introduction can be if you want to implement it i'd suggest that you would that you want to um and then uh, and then two other packages so uh the the middle package is you know 9.95 a month and that includes the marketing um, and that includes higher commissions. Uh, and, and what you'll find is that your engagement level will increase because of that. It, it just it simply will. And you'll, you know, you'll make more money and you'll have deeper engagement with your clients. And then uh, the, our third package 
which is 1495, also includes the Zeppo CRM, which lets us, you know, drive those opportunities within the business. And uh, and and obviously, you know, there's a, there's an opportunity to either you know start with one and then upgrade, etc. Or you might do, or perhaps you're already paying a thousand dollars. I know plenty of accounts paying at least twelve hundred bucks for their marketing every month. Oh, easily. I know, and that was just so, for SEO and Facebook posts. Like, yeah, which, which they don't get anything out of. So, oh, no. so I think you know as much as. Someone might say, well, you know, $9.95, you know, it sounds like a lot, but it's not just spent. We're giving you a return on the commissions. And um, <clears throat> and we've got some forecasts there. That's based on our experience, I mean, on how much can be earned from different levels of service. And if, if you look at, say, uh, you know, the first one, we're, we're expecting about 10 to 11 client engagements delivering you some return. Now, with some interest and help from the partner themselves, that will increase, obviously. But yeah. you can see that it doesn't take too much uh, to actually generate some income. And the, on the last one, we're looking at around $70,000. That's that's about the standard for uh, a firm that's engaged with their clients and consistently marketing and using the other services that we provide, like uh, follow-up of your leads for you. You know, uh, So, oh, what happens when I get 100 leads? Who's going to follow them up? Well, we'll do that for you. Right, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know we'll make the appointments for you, etc. So there's different levels of packages and services uh, depending on what the investment is that you'd like to make, um, and and higher levels of commission as and we I go. I think I keep just for the guests that are with us. I keep challenging you on the income generator because I think it's quite conservative uh, because it's it's like thirteen or what is it thirteen twenty. 30 or 41 engagements like if I was one of your clients for example or accounting client you've got invest I've got you know three or four investment loans um a car car finance something to do with business and uh maybe my self-managed super so that you know three or four well, would be one the, client for example yeah that, that revenue forecast is based on the services we provide, doesn't have anything in there for what you might earn to for doing the estate planning yourself, facilitating the self-managed super fund. It doesn't have anything to do with increase of uh, accounting fees uh, mm. for offering those services to new clients like asset protection, et cetera. So it's, it's purely based on the services we deliver. There's no, as I said, forecast uh, of an increase of revenue. And, and that will happen. You know, mm. you set up a super fund for someone, we do a loan for them, they buy a property, you know, there's they need a risk uh, insurance review. You know, all of the all of those things uh, add to the revenue. So we have tried to be conservative, um, but one of the things that I'd like to point out in terms of the you know the monthly subscription that we're talking about is that uh, if you're paying us money and you're not making that money back, then we'll give it back to you. And so yeah, I like that. Not many people will put put their money where their mouth is. So there's yeah. a be there. Mm. Yeah. So if so. In its basic form, you know, you, you pay us twelve thousand dollars over the year. You know, if we only deliver to you and your client base five thousand dollars worth of commission payments back to you, then we'll give you back the other seven. I mean, I'm very, very confident about us delivering for this. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, um, excellent. Okay, so pretty much risk free there, um, Todd. So this is the sort of um, technology that you link in with. You link together. Yeah, look, it's just a it's it's a just a basic example of what we talked about before with Zeppo. Um, just to remind everybody that you know of, there's a lot more connectors that Zeppo um, can connect to, uh, and um, but the the package that we provide allows them to, as an example, connect to Zero Practice Manager, Zero Tax, uh, and, and BGL or Class. So it's a couple of connectors within that package. It's mm -hmm. It's what I think most practices probably will use, you know, the most. Uh, there's a whole heap of others that they can connect to, but these are the main. And they can ones pick and are. choose what package to. It's not that set in stone, is no, it? No, no, no. If you're if you're using if you're using Myo but not Zero, that's fine. If you want to use Class instead of BGL, that's fine. Yep. Um, we just sit down and go through the number of connectors that we that we put in, and then why are we driving that data in, and how we're going to use it together. Excellent. Okay, so the process of getting involved is book a consult with you or Christy, obviously, to have a chat about yeah. whether or not this is, you know, going to enhance your business or not. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just a, an information call. I know we've provided a lot today, but it might raise more questions. And um, so we're just there to answer the questions, have a chat about the business itself, whether it suits. And I'm happy to say, if it doesn't, I don't think so, but um, I'm happy to say, well, look, you've got it covered. 
you know, because some people say, well, I think I've got this already, but, you know, I, I just want to check with you. And that's fine. We'll talk you through it and maybe point out some gaps that we can see, introduce you to some people like, uh, you know, software suppliers, et cetera, uh, or consultants, if that's what you need. Uh, but, but ideally, you know, that session is designed to answer all of your questions, uh, not for us to, you know, hard sell you something because you've already seen what our packages are. So, you know. Uh, and then and there's yeah, a case of it best. You might start off free service and realize, well, I want to speed it up now. So you might add the marketing and then you might add some other bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then so we just sign off on a referral agreement. We have to have those in place. Um, we show you how to implement um, uh, or we implement it for you. In fact, you know, the marketing, for example, with your help and um, and Zeppo connections, we do that for you. Uh, so you don't have to train your staff. In, in how to run that system, which is a concern that some people have. It's like, oh, I've got enough to do, right? So, well, that's okay. We'll do it for you. Yeah. Uh, and then we lay out that program. Okay, month one, we're doing an introduction and we're, you know, here are the three things we're going to do with you. And then what are the results? And then we review it every sort of quarter or so to see how it's going. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you obviously have a chat about that. Training, evaluate, review, improve, like any good professional service would do. So yeah, I mean, if it's not working, if it's not working, what I don't, what I don't, I never want to get to a situation where someone calls me and says, uh, I don't want to do this anymore. And we haven't spoken about it previously. Yes. Like, why would that happen? We need to review it constantly and make sure it's working. Yes. So um, just to finish off, just for those who would like to have a go, this is a QR code to Todd's competition landing page. If you'd like to experience it as though you were a client, feel free, by all means, into the competition. And um, Todd's survey questions are aligned with what he's trying to achieve with his business. So if you can appreciate that, probably got more questions about you running your accounting practice as opposed to if you're an accountant um, and asking questions of your own clients about different things. But just to go through an experience that you'll get uh, an email saying you've entered and um, go through that just so you can have a look at it. Feel free to do that. That's the QR code there. It wasn't COVID, so wonderful to us and generous i've taught the whole world how to use qr codes i was using these 16 years ago and nothing ever happened because no one knew how to use them so <laughs> it's a marketer's dream now it's fantastic and in fact uh, we're getting more entries off our printed magazine than any other medium because there's a QR code on the front of it now. So Sure, and also that, people want to read actual magazines. So. They do. They still want stuff popped in the letterbox and um, read it because it, and it sits around for weeks and months, not a few minutes or seconds in your inbox. So anyway, I'd like to say thank you to everyone. We've got Todd and Christy. Sorry, Christy, we forgot to give you an opportunity to talk today. Um, Christy um, works across a few businesses, um, mine and Todd's and uh, the direct bank of, um, opportunity as well. So she's across the whole uh, gamut of um, opportunities here as well. So feel free to have a chat with Christy or Todd. Todd's diaries there for you if you want to jump into that. And um, I would encourage your conversation. He, he's not a high pressure salesperson uh, at all. Uh, he will just tell you how it is and whether you need um, help or not. So just want to thank you both for joining today. Christy, have you got any last minute things? I know I'm putting you on the spot here now. Have you got anything you'd like to share that you've been learning since working with accountants? <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Yes, look, I just find that there's lots of opportunities with accountants because they've just got such great knowledge and great ability to connect with their clients. So being able to take their businesses to the next level seems something that seems quite easy for them. Um, so I think Todd's program, the Zenium program, really helps accountants be able to do that. Um, so it's really exciting. So I actually look forward to um, chatting with you all and I'm um, having a bit of a discussion about your personal businesses to see how we can help you going forward. Thanks, Christy. So thank you very much. Todd, anything you'd like to say before? No, I think we've talked enough, Dina. We've talked have. enough, but <laughs> hopefully we can have some more discussions with some people if they're interested. And uh, and thanks thanks again for hosting. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Todd and Dina. Thank you. Thanks, have Christy. a great day, great weekend, and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now. Bye.